Hi folks, welcome to Rocks in a Box Part 2. This box has sedimentary rocks, all right? So, when we're dealing with sedimentary rocks, we have two kinds, right? We have clastic or detrital, right? Those are made of clasts or detritus, right? These settle out and we're concerned about energy when we have those, right? How much energy does it take to deposit that particular sediment, right? And then we have chemical sedimentary rocks. Uh, and then these are the ones that are you know, precipitated out of solution, right? Um, and then we also have organic sedimentary rocks, by which I mean coal, right? So, taking a look, first of all, at these sedimentary rocks, we can separate them out, the rocks we have here, because, you know, chert and, and, and uh, um, uh, gypsum and, and halite, we've already kind of looked at those, so we're gonna ignore those, but we're gonna uh, go ahead and take out our rocks here. Right. In a box, all of our rocks, right? And an easy way to tell if you have chemical or clastic sedimentary rocks, well for me, uh, is acid, right? Now, of course we did not send acid home with you, that would be a liability, right? You can also use household vinegar, it'll work just as well to kind of test this out, well not just as well, but it'll work as well. So let's put a drop of uh, acid on each of these rocks and see which ones react. It's super close, we don't get super close. Nothing there. Nothing there. Nothing there. Nothing there. Nothing there. Nothing there, but that's... Nothing there. Whoa! All right, we found one chemical sedimentary rock. All right, we found two chemical sedimentary rocks. Three chemical sedimentary rocks. Four chemical sedimentary rocks. And then this guy, wait for it, a little bit of fizz, five chemical sedimentary rocks. This one is actually our Dolo stone. We're gonna put him away. He's got uh, some magnesium inside of him too. We're not gonna worry about that here, right? So, you don't have acid, you don't have vinegar. How are you going to tell which rocks are clastic and which rocks are chemical? Well, another nifty clue, or nifty hints, is that calcite is softer than glass and things that you might confuse it with generally have quartz in them and those are gonna be harder than glass, right? So if we take this little guy here, right, scratch it against our glass, nothing at all, right? Now let's take this guy here. Oh yeah, that's scratching, right? There we go, that scratched it, right? Even this big block that feels kind of sandy, right? Doesn't really, I mean, no, still smooth, right? So you can use your uh, chemical or your uh, glass streak plate to determine which ones have calcite in them and which ones are likely clastic, right? The one that this won't work with is our very fine grained clastic rocks, right? These may, no, it's probably going to rub off as well, right? So these are our rocks made out of clay, right? These are our shale and our mudstone. Same thing in this class, don't worry about it, right? When you feel these clastic sedimentary rocks, right? They're gonna feel very smooth. You're not gonna feel much at all on them, right? What kind of minerals are in here? Well, the clay minerals, right? So here we have our clastic sedimentary rock, our finest grain, our shales or mudstones, right? Now, I determined these were all chemical, right? These are all clastic, right? Now, you got a piece of uh, rock here. Take your hand, rub it over the side. Feels kind of like sandpaper. That's gonna be a sandstone, right? This one has bigger chunks. We'll talk about him in a minute. This one has bigger chunks than sand size. We'll talk about him in a minute. Uh, but this one too, right? This one feels like a grittier, coarser, piece of sandpaper, but it's still sand, right? Now, there's a big difference between the two of these though. This one is a quartz sandstone. If we looked very closely in here, we'd see it's almost entirely quartz grains, right? 
That means this is a very mature sandstone. Quartz is a very stable mineral. It sticks around for a long, long time. So this means everything else has been some, a sediment for so long that everything else has, has kind of weathered out of it. All right? So this is a quartz sandstone, very fine-grained quartz sandstone. Our other sandstone here, you notice it's got a lot of pinkish in it. Right? That pink comes from feldspar. We'll also notice that the chunks in here, right, it's not nearly as, as nicely sorted as far as grain size. We've got a kind of a variety of different grain sizes. Uh, it's also kind of, you know, semi-angular. Those chunks are not super, you know, sharp and pointy, but they're not nice and rounded either. Right? This is all indicating this hasn't traveled very far. The pink in here comes from uh, potassium feldspar, or orthoclase feldspar, they are pinkish and whitish feldspars, and those turn into clays very quickly. So if this has gone very far at all, all those uh, those feldspars will drop out and you won't see those anymore. The other clues that this hasn't gone very far again, you know, the, 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 the sorting, the sizes here, and the angularity, right? This is what's known as an Arcos sandstone, A-R-K-O-S-E. And this is classically formed right outside of mountain chains. So the granite in the mountains is weathering, right? Granite is full of, pota or of the feldspar that weathers, and that's what we get a bunch of here, quartz and feldspar coming off of that granite, right? So here's our two sand size ones. Oops, so we got those, those, right? And then we have our gravel size constituents, right? And remember from the lecture, the difference between our two different gravel sized ones, conglomerate and breccia, is that the pebbles in the conglomerate are rounded, right? So notice here the pebbles are fairly rounded, nice and smooth, right? That indicates this has traveled for a, a good distance. It's been a sediment for a while. These pieces have had time to tumble and turn and uh, little sharp edges get knocked off of them, right? That is as opposed to this one, which is a breccia. Right? You can see that these are much more angular and kind of pokey and sharp chunks, right? This hasn't traveled very far at all. Uh, if it had, these would have become more rounded and smooth, right? So the difference between breccia and conglomerate, you have angular chunks and more rounded chunks. This one indicates distance of transport. This one indicates not very far at all. This one has been a sediment for a while. This one has not. Right? Now let's talk about this interesting guy over here, right? If you recognize him from your stockings at Christmas, indeed, this one is coal. You can even see some little fibrous plant material stuck in here. Not a mineral, dead, squished organic matter. It's been compressed together, right? Could It will burn if you light it on fire, but please don't light your house on fire or anything, you know? Um, and, uh, uh, you know, this, again, not a mineral, but a very important resource for us and, and a rock as such. This is not technic, it's not a clastic rock. It didn't settle out of an energy environment, right? It's, uh, it's not a chemical sediment rock. It didn't precipitate, so we'll call it an organic sedimentary rock, right? Now, the difference between our different types of limestone uh, basically is what is inside of them, right? So our limestone is the only really uh, um, uh, chemical sedimentary rock you need to worry about. Uh, but here we see a chunk that's got a bunch of fossils in it, right? This is called a fossiliferous limestone. Go figure that, right? Similar, but almost entirely broken up seashells. This stuff is very porous. You can almost uh, pour water right through it. This one is called coquina. C-O-Q-U-I-N-A. Right. Then this one here would be more of an inorganic kind of uh, uh, precipitated limestone, a blocky or massive limestone, also known as crystalline limestone. Uh, any of those, right? But still all, all limestone. This one, a little, maybe a little hard to see here on camera, but maybe you can see that there's little tiny little spherical balls in there. Those are little uh, inorganic uh, precipitates of calcite, and as they're in the sea, they tumble, they roll, uh, they turn into little balls, and they're called ooids, right? Because when you look at them, you go, ooh, that's cute. So this is a oolitic limestone, right? So we have our fossiliferous limestone, our coquina, our massive limestone, and our oolitic limestone, right? Now, when we look at our clastic sedimentary rocks again, all right, let's think about energy, because energy is very important here, right? Obviously, the bigger the chunks, the more energy it takes 
to transport these chunks. So this is showing you a much higher energy environment than say this, right? This is very fine grained, almost all very consistent, nice rounded little quartz pebbles if you looked under the microscope, right? Uh, this one uh, is probably a sand dune chunk, chunk of an old fossilized sand dune. Wind tends to sort things very well, right? A little bit more energy and a little bit of varied energy in this environment, right? Not as much energy as this because these chunks are bigger. Now we're looking at the chunks, the pieces within the rock, not at the whole rock itself, right? So we're looking at how round these little pebbles are in there, right? And then of course, our mudstones, right? Our clay minerals separating out only when you have the very quietest environments, a still lake, a lagoon, a deep ocean, right? Or a, a floodplain where the water's just sitting stagnant on the floodplain. Guess what's falling out of suspension there? It is our, our clays, right? Producing our, our mudstones and shales. All right, folks, hope you enjoyed this. We'll see you for the next Rocks in a Box.